Hi friends, now that we have learnt about the course of the facial now, now let's know about the lesions that are associated with the facial now. Uh, imagine there is a lesion that is, uh, that is occurring here. Uh, so what can happen? If the lesion is here, obviously these nerves cannot function and there is ipsilateral facial paralysis. And now let's imagine what will happen if the lesion is between the now to step uh, the now the part of the nerve which is between the now to step radius and the corda tympani that is here. If this is affected along with the uh, ipsilat along with these nerves, even this is cut. So uh, uh, now uh, along with uh, uh, what is known as ipsilateral facial palsy, there is also loss of taste in the anterior two third of the tongue which is nothing but the fun which was nothing but the function of the cord tympani and also the subman uh, the submandibular ganglion is now no, has lost its connection so the salivation from the submandibular and the sublingual gland is lost so taste and submandibular and subganglia uh, sublingual glands uh, salivation is lost if the lesion is here what will happen if the lesion is still above that is uh, proximal to the now to step radius if the lesion is somewhere here along with the these two features there is also hyperacusis so this is uh, uh, this can happen so based on the clinical features of the patient to which uh, the patient will present to you you will locate where is the lesion and if the lesion is uh, uh, here that is at geniculate ganglion or even below or even above the geniculate ganglion along with these features even the G GPSN greater petrosal now uh, has uh, lost its connection hence uh, the lacrimal gland secretion is lost so if a patient presents to you with a loss of lacrimation you should suspect uh, that this is a lesion of a lesion at or above the geniculate ganglion this is about the uh, a few of the uh, few of the interpretation how you can draw based on the clinical features. Now I want to add few more things. The seventh, the seventh now uh, lesion can happen uh, when the seventh now lesion has uh, occurred. The facial now loses its voluntary actions but the involuntary emotional moments example the spontaneous smiling is usually preserved so occasionally the patient may spontaneously smile even if uh, they have the seven nerve lesion because this is up, the emotional part involuntary movements uh, is supplied by another uh, fibers apart from seven now uh, so the seven nerve uh, injury can be of two types element type UMN type. In element type, it is ipsilateral facial paralysis. In UMN type, it is a contralateral lower half of the face is affected. Is affected. Okay, now let's learn about the features. Imagine this is a face. Uh, uh, in the element type, the lesion uh, of ipsilateral face is affected. Um, there is loss of frontal ring here the wrinkles will be there but here loss of frontal wrinkles and there is bells phenomena on that side of the eye I will explain you what is bells phenomenon later and law the nasolabial fold is absent on that side loss of nasolabial fold and the mouth deviates to normal sides deviates to normal side 
these are the features when the uh, entire half of the face is affected so right from upper to the lower part of the face that is loss of wrinkles bells phenomenon loss of uh, the uh, nasolabial fold and uh, the mouth deviates to the normal side uh, if it upper motor uh, lesion occur the, uh, there will be uh, normal uh, what to say no, uh, no the wrinkles for frontal wrinkles are normal and the eyes are also normal there is no bells phenomenon and the only thing is uh, the mouth uh, deviates to deviates mouth deviates to normal side and uh, there is loss of nasolabial fold that is only the mouth and the nasolabial part is affected and this is about the ulm and umn type of the lesions of seventh now i said the uh, a phenomenon known as bell's phenomenon bell's phenomenon occurs when a patient is unable to close his eyes as he tries the eyeball rolls upward exposing the conjunctiva below the cornea so a rolling of the eyes when the patient is asked to close his eyes is known as bell's phenomenon okay so we learn few fancy terms that is bell's phenomena and uh, one more term is ramsay hunt syndrome ramsay hunt syndrome uh, it is a syndrome in which the seven nerve is affected and that is the herpes zoster infection uh, infection occur herpes zoster infection of the geniculate ganglion occur and this will lead to ipsilateral element type facial nerve palsy plus painful vesicular eruptions on the external uh, eruptions on the external auditory meatus so this is about the uh, ramsay hunt syndrome okay and uh, you should also know that most commonly the facial now uh, affected is unilateral but there are condition where the bilateral uh, facial palsies can occur there are gbs sarcoidosis acute leukemia sickle cell disease so these are the condition in which there can be bilateral facial palsies also now that we learned the lesions of the seventh nerve and we know that the seventh nerve arises from the pons let all let us also learn about the lesions of the pons uh, the imagine this is a cross section of the pons Uh, uh now that we know that this is the sixth now nuclei which is at the facial colliculi level and this is the section of the pons uh, which is taken at the uh, facial colliculi okay cross section and the sixth now nuclei will emerge like this and the seventh now nuclei bounds around and comes like this this we have learned from my previous video okay and it is at this level even the eighth now comes so this directly which is coming is the sixth now and the one which is coming winding around is the seventh now and one which is far away is the eighth now this is the eighth now okay and uh, now will uh, what will happen if the uh, if here you should also know here comes the cortico spinal and cortico nuclear fibers now let's uh, let's learn about the lesions what will happen if the ventral pons is affected if the ventral pons is affected ventral part of the pons is this much so this ventral pons if affected it is known as 
ventral pontine syndrome also known as millard gubler syndrome so now that we know the anatomy you can guess what are the symptoms that can occur the sixth nerve is affected the seventh nerve is affected and the corticospinal corticonuclear tracts are affected uh, so and the symptoms could be if the corticospinal is affected it is the contralateral contralateral hemiplegia if the seventh nerve is affected it is the ipsilateral facial palsy if the sixth nerve is affected ipsilateral convergent squint squint uh now now let's uh, imagine what will happen if the if there is a lesion if the lesion in the uh, pont cerebellar angle this is the pons and this uh, this is this is the pons and this are the where the peduncles comes cerebellar peduncles if there is a lesion at the ponto medullary junction okay this is the ponto medullary junction so this purple color which i drew and uh, this blue color is the the blue color is the millard gubler we learned and now the purple color which is at the angle uh, this is the ponto cerebellar angle so this is known as ponto cerebellar angle syndrome also known as um, this is a uh, acoustic neuroma this you might be this uh, is a very used term acoustic neuroma now you can uh, know from the anatomy that the eighth nerve is affected and the seventh nerve is affected and this and the mcp or the icp is affected so uh, so seventh nerve affected seventh nerve affected eighth nerve affected icp or the mcp is affected so is the lesions facial palsy ipsilateral facial palsy eighth nerve leads to progressive deafness and this leads to ataxia uh, so this is about the ponto cerebellar angle syndrome there is a one more term that is known as locked in syndrome locked in syndrome this occur when there is the lesion of the ventral pons whole bilaterally bilateral ventral pons bilateral ventral pons lesion the uh, here the patient cannot do anything cannot move in any part of his body the only thing he can do is blink and move his eyes only up and down and nothing else the patient is aware and awake but still he is not able to do anything.